You can trust me. Hi, I'm Brita Long and I am the author and creator of The Happier Attorney and this is a channel where we talk about mindset and we talk about flat fees and how to have a better quality of life as an attorney. So this channel is only for attorneys and today we're going to be talking about trust and what does it even mean to believe that you are trustworthy? You know, we attorneys, regardless of the jokes and the public perceptions and a few examples that make the news, we are a pretty trustworthy bunch of people and a pretty honest bunch of people. Uh, but it's interesting to dive down and see, you know, what does that actually mean? Okay. So, um, today we're going to be talking about just that. What does it mean to believe that you are trustworthy? And at the end of the day, forget the RPCs at the end of the day, if you're not trustworthy, you're not going to have a good career. Okay. You might make money, but you're not going to be respected period. I've been doing this gig. I've been an attorney since 1997. Um, and those attorneys that are not trustworthy, everybody knows who they are and nobody respects them. And in my opinion, you know, who cares if you made some money, your colleagues don't have any respect in you. I, who wants that? So let's just talk about this. What does trust really mean? Okay. The following is from Dr. Brene Brown. And I am a fan of Dr. Brene Brown. And um, this is directly from her. Give credit where credit is due. Okay. So the first element of trustworthiness is boundaries. And I know attorneys, we have some trouble with boundaries. We really do. But to be trustworthy, you have to set boundaries, healthy boundaries. But when you don't set healthy boundaries, then you make it clear to people that it's okay to cross them. And it's not clear what your boundaries are. And once you establish and keep boundaries with clients, employees, everyone else, it actually establishes trust. They know where the line is and that provides safety. And when you don't provide boundaries or worse, you establish a boundary and then let somebody blow through it, which, you know, we've all done. It erodes trust. Think of, go back to childhood. Okay. If your mom said, you know, you have to be in when the streetlights turn on. Now I'm really dating myself and you violated it, you came in after and there were no consequences, you blew through that boundary. Do you trust that the next time there's going to be a boundary? No, it didn't mean anything. You can't trust that. Okay. So if I, as, and here's the other thing with attorneys, if I, as a client can't trust you, my attorney to have boundaries with me, then how can I trust you to have boundaries with the other side? I'm going to say that again. If your client can't trust you to have boundaries with them, how can they trust you to have boundaries with the other side? Okay. Number two is reliability. You do what you say you will do when you've said you will do it. Okay. What also that means is you're not hustling or over committing to get a feeling worthiness. We attorneys love to glorify busy. The busier we are, the better we are, right? We're so important. Okay. So, a lot of times when balls start getting dropped, it's not like somebody wakes up in the morning and says, oh, you know, I'm not going to do what I said I was going to do today. Okay. It's that we get busy because a lot of times we're overcommitted. We're overstretched. Okay. So watch that. When you say you're going to do something, do it. When you say it'll be done by this time, have it done by this time. Get your work done when you say it will be done. And some of this is priority. And every single one of you has had to do this in the past and has done it. How do I know that? 
because if you are a licensed attorney, you've taken the bar exam. You got a lot done in a short period of time. You got it done. I know you can do this. It's a matter of prioritizing and it's a matter of keeping your word to yourself and to everybody else. When you say it's going to get done, you get it done. Okay. No excuses. And if you are having a hard time getting that accomplished, maybe step back and say, okay, what is going on? Why is my plate so full? Why am I having such a hard time getting things done? Am I just procrastinating? Why am I procrastinating? Maybe it's, you're not getting something done because you don't want to do it. Maybe, you know, you're in the wrong practice area or something, or maybe you can farm out that particular thing that, oh my gosh, every time that I do that, it's a nightmare. Okay. Maybe farm that out. But if you tell somebody this is going to be done, get it done. Okay. Three is accountability. You don't back channel and blame. And you hold other people accountable in a straightforward way. You don't have to be a jerk about it. You never humiliate somebody, but you hold yourself accountable and you hold somebody else accountable. And this is so hard. It's so hard. And especially holding other people accountable like staff. Oh, so what do we do? We ignore it. We, oh, we maybe throw in a little hint here and there, but we don't hold them accountable in a straightforward way. And then what happens is it gets bigger and bigger and then it reaches a boiling point and we blow up and now we have a mess. As uncomfortable as it can be, it is far better to hit it straight and hit it at the beginning. And when you can say things in a kind way, this didn't get calendared properly. It needs to get calendared properly. If it doesn't, if, if this continues, this is what is going to happen. And here's why it has to get calendared properly. So whatever's going on, it needs to be fixed. Straightforward, kind, straightforward, but you don't need to mix words. You don't need to have this, a big thing. You don't need to have a big, huge sit down and sandwich it, the negative in between two positives. This happened. It can't happen in the future. Straight forward. Okay. And also you hold yourself accountable. I will never forget one of my first employers. I'm not going to say who, um, he had a reputation. He had been practicing law since the earth cooled and he had a horrible reputation in a small community for not taking the blame for anything. It was always opposing counsel's fault. It was always his staff's fault. Don't throw your staff under the bus. Yes, your staff might have not done whatever. You know what? You're the boss. You're responsible. It's your staff. It's your, no. I'm sorry that didn't get done, your honor. That should have gotten done. I am sorry, period. You don't, please do not ever throw your staff under the bus, okay? And then you go and you fix the problem. What happened here? How did this happen? So it doesn't happen again. Okay. So the next four, the four thing for trust uh, ability is the vault. Now, I hope we all keep things confidential, but do you not just, are you sharing anything, whether it's from clients or not, that's not yours to share. And you know, I'm guilty of gossiping and it's not, it, it makes you feel better for like two seconds because you feel superior, but it, you always walk away feeling a little dirty, Ugh. right? So are you a person who is gossiping about other people, sharing other people's stories that you have no right to share? Okay. And sometimes that includes clients, quite frankly. 
not two other attorneys, not outside, but two other attorneys. Hopefully that it doesn't, but, and I remember this one, um, attorney that I worked with many, many years ago. She was very guilty of this. She gossiped about other attorneys all of the time. She seemed to have a lot of personal information about attorneys. And the first thing that I'd walk away with thinking is, well, what she's saying about me to everybody else, right? If she's talking about everybody, she's probably talking about me too, okay? And it just made her look really bad. It made her look petty. It made her look, it, it, it was an, a trust issue. You didn't trust her. You certainly didn't share things about yourself to her anymore. And it just made her look petty and just, mm. so don't do that. So here are my two cents. Those were again from Dr. Brene Brown. Here are my two cents. You have to make sure that your walk matches your talk. You cannot be a hypocrite. And I'm not talking about being a perfectionist and never, you know, when you say you're healthy, never eating, you know, crap. But overall, does your behavior match what you say you are and who you say you are and what values you say are important to you? Because boy, we've all seen the people who are hypocrites and do you trust them? No. Second, believe people's behavior. People can say whatever they want. Their behavior doesn't lie. And most specifically, patterns of behavior never lie. They just don't. So behavior and patterns over other people's words. And know the difference between a mistake versus a decision. It's quite frankly, very irritating to me, not that that's relevant, but it's irritating when you see people who get caught in a scandal. And what do they do? do on TV. They all get on TV and they're remorseful. No, they're not. What do they say? It was a mistake. I made a mistake. No, you made a decision over and over and over and over again. Okay. The intention is totally different. Everybody makes mistakes. Not everybody makes bad decisions. Okay. So a mistake is the wrong answer on a test. A bad decision is deciding is deciding not to study. Very different, okay? One is a one-time lapse in judgment and, versus a conscious choice. And so, you know, be honest with yourself about that too. If you're continually choosing behavior, that's a decision, not just a mistake. And, you know, start building some trust with yourself as well. Okay, so um, this is Breed Along for The Happier Attorney. If you've gotten anything out of today's video, please like, subscribe, comment, uh, so that and share so that other attorneys can see this as well. And if you want more specific information on flat fees, join the Facebook group, Attorneys and Flat Fees, read The Happier Attorney, uh, my book on, it's on Amazon, or if you wanna work with me, you can check out how to do that and who I work with at breedalong.com. So uh, take care and we'll see you next time.